next level. What's up? Peace in the morning. Welcome Peace to the Peace morning. in the Morning Show. This is Darius A. Stanton saying, ha, 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 how you feel on this Tuesday morning. You know what time it is. It's Talk To Me Tuesday. I'm yelling uh -huh. and shouting in the microphone, spitting at everything. What's up, DB? What's going on? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I see we have um, none other than Dynamic Diana, Delegate Diana, Dr. Delegate Diana Fennell in the studio. Welcome back. Welcome thank you. back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. I'm telling you. I see you've been around the world. <laughs> yeah, 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 huh? It's a pleasure to be back. You know, August, I usually take that, you know, that big break. And um, actually, not a break, but, you know, I call it a distressor. And um, it was really relaxing and spending time with my family. You know, we have to do that no matter what. We have to spend time with our family. Well, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. No doubt about it, no doubt about it. Well, you know, um, as usual on the Peace of the Morning Show, on Talk To Me Tuesday, uh, we want to make sure that you reach out to us at 240-455-5934. That's 240-455-5934 here at elifemedia.net. Uh, if you're checking us out on Facebook Live, you can only see a portion of the show, so I suggest that you shoot, 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 shift gears and cut it on over to eLife Media. That's www.elifemedia.net. So today here in the state of Maryland, which is the home of the Peace in the Morning show, children are back to school. Yes. That's right, back to school after Labor Day. Now, a lot of children went back to school weeks, weeks, weeks ago. Um, our governor decided that it was best for business and pushed it on back to September the what, 4th? Is that the day of the day? Today is September the 5th. 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 The day so, after Labor Day. The day after right. Labor Day. And we had an awesome Labor Day show. How about that, D.B.? Oh, man. I saw the ratings. Uh, they were off the, off the, off the chart. Well, right. if, you, if you get a chance to, you want to go back. You want to go back and check out that phenomenal show yesterday. We had the Gorm family on board and uh, talked about Labor Day, the history of Labor Day, and how Labor Day actually grew uh, out of protest. Yeah. You know, um, so you definitely want to go back and check out that show because it was a phenomenal, phenomenal show uh, that featured a young man who talked about his um, desire to be, a, not only desire, but currently is a businessman at 17 years old. Oh, wow already owns his own business, already has his uh, colleagues, classmates, and friends wearing his t-shirts, supporting his brand. Mm -hmm. He got a little education from the brand master himself, Delegate Darrell Barnes, and um, you know, it was, uh, it was a really good show. Uh, his mom, Connie Gorham, uh, also an entrepreneur, talked about her legacy as being an entrepreneur, growing up in an entrepreneur family where mom and dad were entrepreneurs and it just passed down mm -hmm. from one step to the next. Right. You know, it just um, one generation to the next. So hats off again to the Gorham families. Thank you so much for sharing our Labor Day. And you know, the most significant thing about it, this was the last holiday before school started. Yes. And this young man got out of bed, it had to be at least eight o'clock mm. to be here on the show at nine mm -hmm. and was ready to roll when everybody else might have been sleeping, doing whatever they were doing, shopping. He was in here promoting his business, handling his business on his day off uh, here on the Peace in the Morning show. Outstanding. You know, That's wonderful. Exactly. So uh, hats off again to our young brother for his commitment, dedication to the family, pushing a legacy of entrepreneurship and uh, business on Labor Day. So, you know, uh, we had a lot of big weekend stories in terms of sports. Um, you know, the Howard Bison. Mm -hmm. We had the coach call in yesterday, not head coach, uh, but one of the assistants, and um, talked to us about that huge win over the University yeah. of not, not Nevada, Nevada, Las Vegas, uh, UNLV, which was a historical win, not only for the school, but just in terms of the nation itself. Uh, so, you know, shout out again to those guys over at Howard University and um, Coach London, whom uh, was on Rolling Bubble Grimes live show, and we hope to be able to bring him in here to the Peace in the Morning show. Outstanding. Uh, no doubt about it. So today on Talk To Me Tuesday, you know, I put out a post over the weekend, and it focused on, it was a very simple question. Where we have violence in our inner cities, what do you see more of? Liquor stores or grocery stores? Liquor stores. 
liquor stores. Uh, you know, if, if before we go on, um, we want to make sure that we send prayers out to Delegate uh, Talmadge Pratt, who lost his grandson, um, don't, you know, in Baltimore, North Baltimore. So um, to answer that question, we see more liquor stores. See more liquor see stores. See more liquor stores. You know, it's unfortunate that you do see more liquor stores, you know, instead of um, having like a set down restaurant, white tablecloth, you know, and um, with their license. But you see more of the liquor stores and, and, you know, around the corners. Not only that, you see food des deserts. We have food deserts that's, that's around. So those are things that I know in my platform that I'll be working on in reference to making sure that we, we can address the issues of food deserts. Yeah, it, it's, um, you know, that's one of the things that brought me to this topic this morning. You know, we have the, uh, the majority, the uh, Democratic majority whip, or the majority whip in the state of Maryland, House of Delegates, Thomas Branch, as you mentioned, um, you know, lost his grandson. <laughs> and unfortunately, people in the inner cities lose their children oh, every, day. every day. There's a grandparent that's morning right now yes. in Baltimore yes. for the other murders that took place over the weekend. Yes. The grandparents uh, in Chicago, Oakland, all um, over. You know, all over the, the, the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, even in Jamaica right now, Jamaica has uh, people really, I don't know to the extent that people are aware, but Jamaica probably, in terms of size, landmass, uh, stretches from about the bottom of Virginia, maybe on up to Delaware, mm. um, across Maryland. Um, and so it, 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 it kind of would maybe be two or three states between Virginia and Delaware is the size of Jamaica. Um, and they already have uh, well over 400 murders, uh, well over wow. 400 murders in that small um, space. Mm. You know, so this, this violence piece is very uh, significant in terms of the inner cities. But the question is, what are the correlations? What is the common denominator? You know, and Baltimore City is a great example um, because of the number of liquor licenses that it has over the legal limit. Over 300. Over 300. And so if we want to see something different, then we have to do something different. So we want to ask people to give us a call. We, we had entertained a lot of conversation about this and got quite a bit, quite a bit of feedback uh, from folks who were talking about, you know, some people said it has nothing to do with liquor stores. It's just strictly what you, what's on your mind. Some well, I, 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 I look at it uh, where, you know, the, the, the situation, let me digress a minute and, and just speak on my good friend, Delegate Branch. Um, who I just had a conversation with a couple of days ago. So, you know, I almost take this one uh, kind of personal because he was a friend. And I'm sure he, just like so many others, as you just spoke about, Darius, you know, unfortunately have to go through this day in and day out. Uh, and as Talmadge is, has even said, you know, uh, it affects home now. Mm -hmm. It affected my family, you know, but and I don't know what it's going to take to, to stop the violence. I think uh, over years we have tried everything. We have tried amnesty. We have tried gun turning. Uh, we've tried you turning your gun, we'll give you $100. Right. You turning your gun, we'll give you a, a, a gift certificate. Mm -hmm. You turning your gun, we, we won't prosecute you. You turning your gun, we'll, we'll do this, we'll do that. To me, I believe it all boils down to economics you know 90% uh, of the reason why someone shoot kills rob someone is because of economics or the lack thereof you know people need jobs people need money that's why you rob the bank that's why you rob somebody's house that's why you go into the pawn shop because people are lack of funds and that's why drug boys sell drugs, because it's money. It's fast money for them. You know, so I think it, it, it all boils down to economics. And if you just take, for instance, uh, Baltimore City, uh, where there is a lack of, I believe that's one of the reasons why. And I believe that's why Mayor Pugh has tried or tried to come up with Institute Free College, you know, to try to give alternatives 
uh, for these individuals. You know, uh, the part that bothers me most is that when you take a life, you know, you show that you have no re uh, remorse for that individual or their families, uh, nor do you even care about yourself. And it's so many times that we have said on this show is that you have to love yourself before you can love someone else. And obviously, those that take a life do not love themselves. Uh, and then it boils back to what you've always said on this show, is that it starts at home. That's right. That's it. You know, the love, the care, uh, the, the, the conversations, the talking to, it all starts at home. And I truly believe that we need to look at these examples and figure out how do we strengthen the family uh, before we can start strengthening the community. I think you're absolutely right about that. You know, um, what a month ago I just talked about, you know, the loss that we had in, our, in my family, you know, and, and as I stated, it's a devastating loss, but it does start at home. <clears throat> I, you know, a delicate, um, Dr. Delicate Bonds, you, you're absolutely right about that. Um, then, you know, to be godless of life in reference to what people, what, I don't care. I mean, you don't care. You need to care. So it starts at home, and that's one of the things, but you don't care. Why don't you care? Why don't you care? One of the things that, you know, I know that I've done in my community, um, when I was the mayor of Coma Manor, what I did, I brought um, the unions in in reference to making sure they have apprenticeship jobs because we had, because that's one of the things when I went down to the basketball court or the corner, right, and they said, well, we don't have jobs. We don't have jobs. I mean, you know, I mean, what do you expect us to do? I mean, I had to bring at that time, um, at that time it was uh, McGaw, he was the uh, district commander and, and um, in sure. Highsville. They had blocked my whole community every street just to get one person, one person, just to kill one person. And McGall can attest for this. We was in the midst of it with the pastors, with the community to to um, to say, hey, no, we can't do this. It's gotta be another way. So we, we asked him, what is it that you want? What is it that you want? I'll never forget that night. Well, you know, um we're gonna just talk to me Tuesday, so we okay. we're gonna we gonna, we no we, we 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 appreciate you know you sharing your passion uh, around this because that's what it takes. Right. You know we had Dr. Bruce on, uh, Dr. Bruce Purnell, who talked about um, how we become desensitized. Uh, the whole purpose, or one of the major purposes behind the ceasefire in Baltimore, the movement that they started there, uh, Sister Erica. I, Mis mispronouncing her last name, Bedgeford, I believe. Uh, forgive me, but every almost every day she posts the f the pictures of the young people. You know, there's a brother in D.C. named Henderson Long, um, who every day sends out Facebook posts of missing children, missing adults, or missing people. So there are people out there who are addressing it, trying to make sure that we don't lose touch and become in desensitized. Um, and that we still feel, because when we feel, we act. And so on Talk To Me Tuesday, we want to know from you, what is it? You know, are the liquor stores, is it economics? Is it the liquor stores? Um, is it the food? Is it the water? What is it that's making, because you got to look at the common denominators. I mean, it really, I, I don't think it's that difficult for us to figure that out. Right. You know, if you look at where the violence is, what's common in those places, and then start to eradicate those things that are most common, then to me, it seems like a formula. But that's just me, Darius Say Stanton, on the Peace in the Morning Show. Give us a call, 240-455-5934. One of the things we do on Talk To Me Tuesday, I know we jump right into it, but we get busy with Bubba Grimes. Oh, yeah. And you know oh, yeah. what times <laughs> it oh, yeah. is. Ladies and I gentlemen, look forward to come Talk on To Me now. Tuesday. You know it's told me Talk To Me Tuesday. Children going to school. It's time for you to cut the food. Get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Crank that joint up for Talk To Me Tuesday. Come on now. Shiv it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Come on now.
over there You better get up out of your chair And work your body down No time to funk around Cause we gon' funk you Right on up We're gonna funk you Right on up And I'm gonna funk you up Right on up We're gonna funk you Right on up I'm gonna funk you up Right on up We're gonna funk you up Morning show. Right What's up? Welcome back to the Peace of the Morning Show. This is Darius St. Stanton in the studio live with our station manager, engineer, DJ number one, two, three, Bubba Grimes. Did you hear him funk it right on up? Get it queued up, roller, because like any it. minute now we can crank it back up. Exactly. <laughs> Look, give us a call at 240-455-5934. We're in the studio with Delegate Daryl Barnes and Delegate Diana Fennell. Gina Morland, thank you for your support almost every day. We see you pop up on a piece in the morning show. So, you know, we talked about uh, the issue of violence in our communities and what do we see more of? Liquor stores, vegetable stores. Somebody else said, well, wherever you see a liquor store and you see uh, a carryout, we didn't talk about that, uh, which are generally operated by Asians in our communities. And then you also see churches in our communities where this violence is concerned. So, you know, those are some of the things that are coming over Facebook. What you want us to give you, I want you to give us a call at 240-455-5934 and share your comments with us regarding what do you see most common in our communities that is throughout. What are the common denominators, the common factors that we see in communities of violence? Well, I think Gina said it uh, best on Facebook where she said that you know, the, uh, we need to ensue more God. Hmm. We need to get the church more involved. And I know, you know, and I'm not saying all churches, so please don't, don't, you know, hit me on Facebook saying Daryl or something else. But I just believe that more churches have to get more involved in the community. They have to go outside of those four walls. Church can't, just can't be on Sunday and Wednesday night. Nah, that, that, that ain't going to do it. You know, uh, you know, all, all of these uh, ministries, those ministries need to get out in the community. And I'm all for, you know, sending food to uh, other places and helping out uh, other other countries. But right now, there there's a time in need right here in the United States where we need help. And this is a time where our brothers and sisters, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whatever you want to call it, this is a time that we must hold hands that we must come together, that we must link up, that we must put our differences aside, that we must put our egos aside, that we must roll up our sleeves, and we say that we want to take back our streets, that we want to do something different, that we want to educate our children, that we want to put our kids first. This is the time that we all must come together to make change. Because if we don't, then I guarantee you, things are going to get worse. Because if you look at what our president is doing and the, the hatred that he's spewing out, you look at what's about to happen in, over with North Korea and war is about to happen. If you if read from a biblical standpoint, we are in trying times. That we are. That we are. You know, I you know, I must say you're right. We do. It's not anything against any church. And as I stated before, it was the church, the police. In the community leaders that when, as I said before, when I was mayor, we was uh, we was able to come out and we had a peaceful. It turned out to be a peaceful situation, but it could have been a devastating night. So you're absolutely right. Egos aside, you know, and one of the things I had a Facebook uh, post and I said we're praying for Houston. Somebody posted back and said pray for Baltimore. I think we pray for everybody because, right as Darius stated it's all over what's happening is devastation all over whether it be the hurricane or murders and these murders have it's not slowing down 
Well, and you know, there was a, a delegate Voss made a, a great point in terms of the things that have been attempted, you know. Um, we have attempted a lot. You know, I've seen, I've been in this space uh, since I was 19. Uh, I was born in 1970, so at 1990, I was 20 years old. Oh, well, you're a young guy. And uh, thank you very much. I'll take it as long as I can. <laughs> and as, and I just um, got back from Vietnam, back <laughs> And and as um, as a result, uh, my bad, roll it. I'm sorry. As a result of that, you know, in 1990, they were calling us black males, young and extinct, mm -hmm. because at that time the District that. of Columbia was having over 400 murders a a year. Right. Right. And um, and so that that that's when the whole murder capital of the world term started um, started. And so. This has been going on for a long time, and long we've been time. doing these same things for a long time. So now it's time for us to look at what are the common denominators right. and stop turning our heads because I think you said it best. It's economics. Mm -hmm. So what is why are we continuously turning our heads on the economic issue? Yes, it's jobs, but what is being fueled and what are people benefiting from on the backs of the people? who are living in these communities that are distressed. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know, e e even with the liquor stores, all right, because it all it all boils down to to dollars and cents. So even with the liquor stores, you know, it would be one thing if the liquor stores was actually given back to the community. Hmm. It would be one thing if the liquor stores was educating them on, on alcohol abuse. It would be one thing if the if the the, the, the liquor stores doing were scholarships doing scholarships doing something other than uh, poisoning our people, you know. So I think you know I, I think you know we have to look at this from a, a, a holistic standpoint once again, you know. And I'm all for I'm a small business owner, so I understand about making money, but I also think that you know we have a responsibility to educate, teach give back to our communities at all times. And I don't think, you know, these liquor stores, man, if you go, there's a liquor store in every corner. You know, so at what point do we as uh, uh, elected officials, commissioners, uh, the liquor board say that, you know, we got too many liquor stores. We don't need one on every corner. That's right. All right hi, dog. Give, damn, give me one on every six blocks. <laughs> well, and, and not the, not every block. There's a liquor store. Now, and here's here's the difference. It's very clear, crystal crystal clear in my eyes. In the inner cities, as you said, every other block or every two blocks, uh, there was every other block. Um, you see a liquor store. In some cases, they're catacorn. Yeah. Yet when you go into the suburbs right. you can't find a liquor store for a few blocks for a few miles yeah. you know you might find you know a wine store here you know something here something there and again look at the amount of homicides mm -hmm. in the suburbs versus or just take out in other places in the city where they're not corner to corner right. and so you know we, you've got to you have to look at it and ask the question what's fueling it the other thing that I want people to focus on is, you know, do the research on alcohol fetal syndrome. Understand, you know, we talked about crack babies. It was very right. visible. You know, you, it was, they, had, they were going in the hospital showing you the baby shaking and all of that. But alcohol fetal syndrome has been around for as long as alcohol has been around because what it does is basically it intoxicates the bloodstream, which then intoxicates the gene pool of the male and the female. So you not only have the mother and her over her eggs right. um, being intoxicated, but you also have the male and his sperm intoxicated. being intoxicated. And so when you are intoxicated, when both of those they come together, and this baby now is born in a, in a toxic state. Mm -hmm. And so, and then now I'm, I'm born in a toxic state from the from my maternal mom, and then parent, and then I come into an environment which is surrounded by alcohol and oh by the way look at television when you watch the sports Ooh. games when you watch the major shows what do you see advertised alcohol what do you see do you see food 
I watched, uh, what did I watch last night? I, I don't remember what this show was, but whichever show it was, all I saw was food, 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 and more food. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you think about it, when you see it, what do you go do? You go, you go buy it and you drink it. You want, mm, I'm hungry. Mm-hmm. I want a pizza. I want this. I want that. It makes you want, 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 want. So, you know, when you have the combination of what's actually there and accessible to you, it's a, it's a basic business model. Mm-hmm. More exactly. distribution outlets. Look at the movies. Movies get higher uh, viewerships because they are in more theaters. It, 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 you know, to me, it, it, it maybe it's just not that difficult. I think the challenge is who's willing to stand up and first of all say, okay, it's, alcohol's a problem. And that means we got to stop selling it. And that means we're going to have to cut back on drinking it. And that means that we're going to have to sacrifice it in our own lives. But we're not willing to sacrifice until, guess what? It starts to hit home. Right. Because cigarettes, people didn't want to sacrifice exactly. either. Exactly. They didn't mind people smoking cigarettes in, in, in restaurants and public places. It was okay until Start affecting you. legislators, right. families started being impacted by cancer, Come on now. secondhand smoke, and it started hitting home. And so now I got to make that difference. So, you know, the reality is at what point, you know, when do we stop allowing the unacceptable to be acceptable. Give us a call at 240-455-5934. I don't know what Roland can do to top that funk you right on up. We're gonna funk you right on up. I'm oh, gonna funk you right on up. We're gonna funk you right on up. He made me get up off my seat. Wait a minute. Uh oh. Come on. <laughs> Say what? Uh. Oh. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I feel like, uh, what's my boy name off of Martin? another funky one <laughs> right here on the piece of the morning show that's right and we had a studio we look uh, uh super dynamite into she went and went to work in the she studio sure oh, she's gonna have to come up front in a minute so we can show her how to do it on that's the piece right. of the morning show we got I, to pump it up i was about to take my coat on yeah, you know what i'm saying she was getting it she <laughs> was the, getting the hell it. the hell was being <laughs> cool <right? laughs> that's right we said it's getting hot in here no doubt about it <laughs> Thank you, Roland Bubba Grimes. So, you know, today we're talking about what's the deal, you know, with um, the violence in our communities. What are the common denominators? Liquor stores, vegetables, uh, stores, outlets, uh, food deserts, you know, have been have been named. The chemical dependency. So, you know, going back into alcohol fetal syndrome, there's another serious contributor. I call it the... Uh, deadly cocktail right this cocktail is a combination of alcohol Mm -hmm. a combination of lead poisoning in the city Mm -hmm. just think of the lead paint that's in our inner cities that have uh, a lot of our lower income housing you know where you have what you call slum lords and other people who have not um, stripped the paint and created you know take the lead off or put in there so you got lead poisoning Uh, we got a call coming in good morning welcome to the peace in the morning show well good morning how are you wonderful good wonderful morning. good morning my Who's... name is frankie washington and i was calling uh, based on the uh, the question and the topic that you were on about 
you know, what do we see more of, liquor stores or or what? And um, one of the things that I'm finding is that we promote negativity more so than we promote positivity. And if we took the opportunity to really, because even like say you see a Burger King commercial, if you see that hamburger, it's going to make you hungry. So if you see somebody that's working, that's like me or you, and they're really doing a good job, Right. Then it will make a difference. So what I'm saying is, how can um, we do to make promote positive stuff more than negative stuff? And I think that would make a difference. And, and where are you calling from? I'm calling from the DMV area. Okay. So, so your your suggestion, I guess, is how can we promote more positivity than we see the negative? Correct. Yes. Uh, what I'm saying is, um, in order to promote more positive things, I think that that would give a better insight to young people that, say, if you see somebody like me and my husband, for, for, for instance, you know, everybody knows that a lot of African-American people just like to work nine to five. You do see some that really get out there and start a business. Well, we get out cut grass. We'll get out paint a house. We'll get out and shampoo carpet. If you actually see it and you see that it's making a difference and you see that, okay, that could be me, then that's going to make you say, you know what, let me get out here and and try it myself. And so what I'm seeing, even with advertisements, is even on Facebook, everything that you see is negative, and that's what they promote, like the fighting. Um, they show the, the gun violence, but they never show what you do for the positiveness, what's a positive thing that somebody does that's being rewarded openly where everybody can say, okay, wow, you know, such and such uh, help the family. Let's promote them more so than promoting a bunch of young people fighting on TV. So first, I, I, Ms. Washington, thank you so much for your call. I think you hit the nail on the head. I, if you were in the studio, we crank a song up and, and let, let you come up here and dance with us uh, like we partying in the studio this morning. But you said something that really is at the core of what we do, and that is the Peace in the Morning Show's primary focus is to promote asset-based communication and positive images that are you know, different from what you see or hear on the television or radio every day. And part of that is exactly what you said. We need to share the positive. Uh, my son, 25-year-old yesterday, just told me about the amount of videos that people have just doing ridiculously stupid things and people spread it like wildfire. They share it all the time. A guy goes in to a restaurant, picks up a chicken wing off somebody's plate, eats it and puts it back on the plate. The people get ready and fight and he acts like nothing's no big deal and people, a million people share it. You know, so we get, we've gotten so used to sharing ignorance, yet right now I'm looking on Facebook, we only have 12, uh, two shares on a story that's talking about something positive. So I want to encourage people to do something. So right now, everybody who's watching the show should be sharing it right off the bat. When you see something positive, share it. Don't get caught up in anything else, but share something positive. You know, not right. just people that you're tied to, not just people that you know. If right. you see it as positive and there's nothing tied negatively to it, share it. Push it out there. You know, right now, people should be sharing this show because we are talking about what can we can do to save the lives of people in the inner cities and across the board. And so as a result of that, we got to share. So I really appreciate you, you know, coming out there. And, I, and the, the other thing that I think you said that has to happen, we have to promote more content that is positive. We have to be creative. Stop thinking that all we can do is what everybody else does to be successful. So the only way a young lady can make it is just she takes off all her clothes and dances half naked and that's the only way that somebody's going to pick her up. Or a rapper, the only way I can make it, if I say enough F-U's and enough N-I-G-G-E-R's, or N-I-G-G-A's, however you want to spell it, versus a nigger, which is an original man, which is really where it really came from, N-E-G-G-U-S. You see, we, we really got to educate ourselves, but stop taking the easy route and take the creative route and be more creative instead of just selling out and doing something that everybody else is doing because it sells. You, you know, um, one of the things, and I, and I know I don't have that much long, but one of the things I had happen to me and my husband was we were in the line. Um, we have a cleaning service, and we had our cleaning business shirt on. 
and we was in line, and we really didn't realize how much of a magnitude it paid for them to see an African-American young couple uh, with a business name on that just, you know, we just stepped out on faith and believed God that this was our opportunity. So we was in line, and this young lady said, um, does, somebody, uh, does their, uh, your company, is that company hiring? Now, she didn't know it was our company. And I said, uh, I don't know. I said, what kind of work do you do? Well, she said, well, uh, I see that you do cleaning. She said, well, um, do you think that uh, they would train me in cleaning? She said, because that's something I've always wanted to do. I said, well, of course we will. She said, we? I said, yeah. I said, of course. We will take you on our wing. We'll take you in. We'll show you how to clean. We'll show you how to uh, mop a floor. We'll show you the proper ways of of going into a house and, and looking at it and being able to tell what needs to be done. I said, because at the end of the day, it's all about us helping one another. She said, do you know I have been um, talking to people every day and asking them how I can find a job, what I need to do. She said, you're the first person that took the time to even just talk to me. And my husband mm. is the type of person that if we see a young man on the side of the street Come on now. And, and he's begging, we're not going to say, oh, you just begging. He'll say, man, you want to cut some grass? You know, come on, go with me, cut some grass. And I think that's what we need to do. We need to embrace our young people and stop judging what they look like because a lot of them are just following trends. Right. Embrace them and be a blessing to them because that's what it's about. If I got a chocolate cake and I don't cut a slice of it and give it to you, you going to look at me like I'm crazy and say, well, how are you going to eat that big old chocolate cake by yourself? So that's my, um, one of the things that I just wanted to share. I'm just so grateful for the opportunity. Um, like I said, my name is Frankie Washington. Uh, we have a cleaning service, and we love God. Well, Miss Washington, you have been a blessing uh, to so many that have heard your voice this morning. And I would uh, say that you continue to do what you're doing because God will continue to bless you and your husband because you guys are making a difference and an impact. You guys are, are, are leading by example. You're setting the trend. So we appreciate you here on the Peace in the Morning Show. Thank you for tuning in. Continue to tell your friends. As Darius said, uh, please share this uh, story with so many other people. If you're on Facebook, share the post. If you're on Twitter, tweet about it. If you're on Instagram, whatever that word is, Instagram it too. So thank you so much. And we need to know, before you leave, please share with us your business, uh, the name the of your name, business. The so. name of our company is a &F Commercial and Residential Cleaning Services. We provide shampoo and carpet, painting, stripping and waxing tile floors, construction cleanup. Uh, we do residential cleaning as well. The number is 301-556-8606. That's 301-556-8606. We love God, and we know that it says faith without works is dead. And we are the dream team clean team. Oh, nice. oh, I know. That's right. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, we're going to reach out to you because we definitely want you to come back, and we're going to help support you and advertise on your show. Have you promote? We want to promote people who promote our community yes, and support. Of course, I thank I God it. for the opportunity and many blessings to you. And I and I speak into the atmosphere that God is going to send you global. That God is going to cause you to step into areas that you've always desired, and that you're going to reach right. more people than you know. But more so than that, and I speak peace and love over everyone that hears this this message that God is going to continue to cause peace instead of strife in this world and unity and blessings over our young people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, Come wow. on now. Wow. My sister. Woo. We're looking forward to you Man. coming in the studio, my sister. Thank you so much love for that. blessing us this morning with Talk To Me Tuesday. Uh, God bless you. Now, God is turning the music up. I love the party, too. <laughs> <laughs> Roll. That's, That's what I'm talking about. Thank you. We was going to roll above the ground. Right. Chance to shine. Oh, man, man. You, you got to shout out. You got caught up over there. Oh, man, I didn't Sister know that was coming. This is the head of caught up over there on that funk time. <laughs> she said, look, that's what people like. The, you know, that's the thing. That's what they're getting on the Peace in the Morning show. They get information. They get energy. They get direct ah. opportunity to communicate. Nice. And then they get to funk it up all Ooh, at the same time. Peace of love. That's powerful. Woo. Let's push that piece of love. Come on, baby. Come on, share what you got. Come on, Rome. Shake what you got. Share what you got. Hi, hi, like me now, me now.
another MC get paid Using my rap style And I'm playing the background Meanwhile, I ain't with that You can't forget that You take my style I'm taking it back Coming back Like Return of the Jedi Sucker MCs in the place That said I could only rock rhymes And only rock crowds But never rock records How you like me now? Give me a 
Oh, 
perfect segue. Take it away. 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 In the place to be, we got to support to promote them uh, historically black college universities. You know what I'm saying? That's Shout right. out to VSU, any other HBCUs out there checking us out. Lincoln University, my alma mater, in the house, the first historically black college university to uh, grant degrees. However, Shaney is in trouble, so say pray. Let me let me reverse that because we're an asset based show. So let me model what we speak. As a sister called in this morning, our very, very powerful caller, Miss Washington. Miss yes. Washington said, speak what you want to see come into existence. That's right. So we are going to see Cheney University make a full recovery and rebound up their enrollment, up their income, That's their right. revenue streams, their That's business right. model, their leadership to make sure that they sustain themselves moving into the future. Prayers out to Cheney University, good vibrations. Support them, lift them up, excuse me, in your prayers. This morning, this afternoon, and tonight, make sure you lift up Cheney University because we didn't. We we will keep our universities. Remember, I said we will keep, not lose. That's we right. have to start speaking what we want to see come into existence. We That's can't right. just say domestic violence, domestic violence. We know what that is. Carolyn we need J. domestic D. peace. We need domestic oh, peace. We need people to speak her. what we want to see come into existence. Domestic peace. Not we keep saying domestic violence for. We have that already. It already exists. We need something that's going to take us to the next level. We got to let that old thinking go. The way we've been leading, we got to let that go. The, the fear that we've had to stand up to people, we got to let it go. When you see what happens when we stand up, and when we stand up together, united that's right. as a human race. That's right. In your own community, take a stand. Go to your local, find out right now how many liquor licenses are supposed to be in your community and how many are there versus the number you're supposed to be. Call your liquor board today. As a matter of fact, Delegate Barnes or, or Fennell, would you all look up for me real quick the liquor board number for the state of Maryland or Prince George's County so we can look it up, find out what they are, and then give a call and find out how many liquor licenses are supposed to be inside of your city. Oakland, California. We have Virginia in the house. Oh, yeah. We got people all over the country. As a matter of fact, all over the Calabasas, world checking out the show. Yes, Calabasas, California. So we need to make sure that we do our local work on a global scale. And sure. the way we do that is dialing up and giving people a call and letting them know what the deal is so uh we talked about we started with addressing how what is common in our communities that is causing the violence what's in every one of those communities in the inner cities that's causing the violence and the things that were listed were liquor stores um, outweighed the vegetable stores we have food deserts then you have stores that have canned foods and people that are selling things canned foods create aluminum well, well, see, that, that, that's I mean, why I say, uh, you know, for me, it's not just the liquor stores that's causing the violence. It is uh, that, for me, uh, of more of economics. Because when the drug epidemic was there, the liquor stores were still there. And now you have uh, uh, opioids and heroin that is more prevalent today, and the liquor stores are still there. You know, so I, I, I just think it, it, it all stems from <coughs> what we've been saying for 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 months on this show is that it starts from within and it starts at home and that is that we have to educate our children on on the things that they should be doing that's positive you know the things that they watch on television the things that they see on television the things that they hear on the radio uh, all of those things have an effect on a child and a young adult uh, well-being and we have to do a better job of trying to promote those things, as Miss Washington said, uh, to come into an existence. And what we're doing here on the Peace in the Morning Show, which I love, is providing that platform to have those types of conversations, mm -hmm. to get people to start thinking, to get people to start being aware, to get people to start using their, 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 their God-given talent, and that is to start reaching out to your neighbors and your and your folks and, and start trying to figure out how do we build collaborators collaboratives to build positive images within our community i think that's where it all starts uh that's what will help bring down some of the crime uh within our uh communities is that if we did a better job of promoting those positive things at home 
and get more involved and make it an education a new sport. Come on. Then then we would start seeing crime come down uh, to record lows. So, you know, we continuously address and, and talk about, you know, it being starting at home. And I, I must again refer to what the sister said, Miss Washington. She said that she's talked to the young lady and said, you know, we have a cleaning business. I can show you how to clean. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, you know people parent based on their frame of reference. First, she took the time. And then after she took the time, then she, she, sold in, she, she sold into the young lady. She didn't pass judgment. She didn't call her out of name, didn't look at her with a scowl. She greeted her, you know, and then talked to her and gave her some love. And people, you know, respect is earned, but you earn respect by giving it. And so, you know, we want to be able to, to, to move forward uh, and, and, and encourage people to promote positivity. When you see people come to you or call you on the phone and they're talking about what this person's doing or what they're not doing or how you can't stand this and how you can't stand that, just give them that work, 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 work. Just, just cut them off. Just cut it off right, right there. Say, look. We got to talk about something else. Positive. We got to talk about something positive. What's going on in your life today? What you doing today? Just immediately doubt. You don't have to pass judgment on them. You ain't got to talk down to them. Just, just immediately model that shift. Mm -hmm. Because we are so used to passing judgment. That's right. We are so used to looking at the negative in people. We're so used to waiting. Can't wait to see something to say why something is not this. Right. Why this person in office didn't do that. Yeah. Why this person on television or the star didn't do this or do that? What about our own lives? What can we do better? Yeah. What can okay. we do to improve ourselves? What can we do to improve our families, our own communities? What have we done to volunteer and help somebody else? Got a call. Without passing judgment. That's right. Okay. Talk to me Tuesday. Welcome to the Peace in the Morning Show. This is Darius A. Stanton. Holla. Peace and love. Darius, how was you, sir? I'm wonderful, brother. You coming on here like you straight out of NYC. Where you calling from, brother? I'm calling from D.C. What's up, D.C.? I do have a C on it. I don't have an N.Y. in front of it. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. Hey, who's, uh, so who's on the line? You got the Queen, Dr. Barnes, and the, uh, excuse me, the Queen, Dr. Fennell in the building. Oh, thank you. Right. Okay, Dr. Fennell said, oh, you hit a nerve that time. You <laughs> said, oh, we got the Queen in the building. We got a few Queens the in the building today, son. I don't know if you noticed or not. Yes, indeed. <laughs> this is natural. I mean, Arden. Okay. Hey, how are you? Yes, indeed. Wonderful, wonderful, good, wonderful. Good, Great good. to see you, man. And the music has been pumping. That's right. Pumping. Oh, yes, right. You know, I think you hit a nerve, really, when it's bottom line is things have changed, what we're talking about. It's one word. I mean, and it manifests through a whole lot of situations, but it's love. It's love. She gave that woman love. Children doing all kinds of things outside to fit in and get into clicks and and get into what people call gangs and everything else, but it's love. We're doing a whole lot of stuff to fit in just because we want to be loved. The money piece, the environmental scenarios, is, I mean, from the lead to the mold to the food to the environmental poison where our neighborhoods are. If you look up, a lot of times our neighborhoods are fires where the high voltage wires go through. Of those things that go through our neighborhood. The train tracks go through our neighborhood. The highways go through our neighborhood. You know, so when you start talking about environmental uh, situations, it's all around us. But the only thing that's going to change that is love. And it's going to start with ourselves because we got to love us before we can love anybody. Right. And, you know, we got to deal with our children and, and all of them out there are our children. You know, you're walking past a few children thinking, oh, somebody's children's acting crazy. Yeah, it's our children out there. That's right. But it's at the, at the end of that, they're trying to fit in. So it's still trying to get love out of that situation. You know, so, I mean, I think uh, my mom, Derry's mother's got a song, Love More. Or, you know, the power of love, man, it's just the fact that that's what it is. Just a little more love you know, is all we need. We need to love ourselves so we can take over our neighborhoods and we can have jobs and have uh, uh, businesses in our neighborhoods so we can show love to our neighborhoods. We can't, we can't think somebody's coming up from Northern Virginia and set up a little mom pod joint in the backyard and make a good living for themselves. They're rolling out of our neighborhood. As soon as they close them doors, they're gone. They open up the next morning and they're gone. They're going to hire their people. They're going to bring them in. They're going to roll out. Well, we sure, no. 
we sure do appreciate you reaching out and pushing that love more, you know. Um, definitely appreciate your support and thank you for, for, for bringing that message of loving more because we do need love. And you know, there's a great example um, that I often think about when it comes to the power of love versus the power of absence mm -hmm. of that. When you think about football fields or basketball courts and children playing basketball or whatever sport it is, and at the end of the game, whether they win or lose, you have some children, as soon as they get off the court, they run into their mom or their dad. And you have some children, every game, they have nobody to run to. So after you come off that court, you come off that field, and you have nobody to run to, nobody, whether you win or lose, nobody to fall into their arms and pat you on the back and squeeze you up and let you feel that embrace, that self-efficacy that emotional, that physiological touch, that support that we all need, which is why they have people come into the hospitals and just hold babies and just rock them and hold them so that they can feel that energy. The lack of energy then becomes dormant mm. and then it turns off a dead part. It, it deadens a part of the body. It deadens mm. a part of your system. So I appreciate you promoting that love more. Dr. Bruce Purnell always, he's got a a new movement out called Love More. And we want to push the love revolution. So look, brother, we appreciate you. We're going to crank it up and crank it out. That's right. Get up out of here. That's right. On the Peace in the Morning Show. Thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. And thank, thank you for you calling for in, man. Thank you, Natural. Thank you for that love. Love you. All right. You got to love you from the queen. That's You're doing right. it, boy. Wow. No doubt about it. Got to love. Show love. Got to so, love. Got to crank. So as we uh, as we start to roll it on up, rolling all down, we're gonna get up out of here with rolling bubble grinds. Um, thank you so much for joining us on the Peace of the Morning Show. Definitely on Talk to Me Tuesday, another opportunity to promote it, push it, share it all day long because people need that love, they need that energy. Thank you for our sister that just got up and rocked it in the studio. She had us rolling in here. I hope she'll be back tomorrow. No doubt about it. Had you sweating, BSU in the house, Virginia State University. As a matter of fact, uh, why don't you come on up and just say peace and love to the crew and let everybody know who you are. No <laughs> doubt about it. Ba -bum -bum. Um, my name is Sierra Shine, and I did graduate from Virginia State University last year, and um, now and I'm you're, here. And your your major, <laughs> what, what's, your, what's your major? My major is mass communications with a minor in dance. All right. Right. <laughs> Obviously, right? No <laughs> doubt. <laughs> Our sister Shine in the studio. Let's give it up for Sister Shine. Sister Shine. Virginia State University. In the house. Right here. Doing the be getting them. No doubt about it. So we appreciate your support. Uh, give us a call, 240-455-5934. Give us a call at 410-703-1898. If you want to promote your business, uh, you know, we're going to reach out to Miss Washington. She's going to be promoting. Uh, but if you want to promote your business, your event, do it here on the Peace in the Morning show. Support shows that support you. That's right. So we're going to give our peaceful moment before we roll off the air. And the peaceful moment with Darius say stand today is focused on just that, creating that peace inside your home because it starts at home. That's right. So think about the things that are causing disruption and, and, and hurt and pain and, and whatever it is that's bringing uh, a problem into your space. Work on creating that peace, finding that peace. But first, find that peace with yourself. You know, I was at visiting one of um, uh, uh, good family friends of ours that were Muslim families, and they said, you know, you can go in the room and use the phone there into our prayer room. Hmm. And it was nothing but Qurans and, and, and Bibles stacked from, from the floor to the ceiling, nothing else but carpet in the room. You rust the movie player, uh, war, war closet. Mm -hmm. But we need, you know, we need to create those peace rooms. We need to create those times where we're praying together as families. Reach out to your folks and call them and pray. Say, can I pray with you? Can you pray with me? Instead of as soon as somebody starts talking to you about something that's negative, something that's, that has discord, you know, once you deal with it, get it said, can we pray now? Or before you even get into the conversation, say, look, I know we haven't talked in a while, but can we pray? And if they don't pray, you just go ahead and pray anyway. Because prayer changes things. And in order for us to be able to get to that next level, we definitely have to bring peace in our homes. And that peace will definitely come with prayer. And following that prayer, you got to get up off your knees or out of the sun and then go to work. 
and bring that prayer into existence. This is Darius A. Stanton with the Peace in the Morning Show with Delegate Daryl Barnes, Delegate Diana Fennell. You heard her, you saw her, Miss Super Sunshine. Nah. Yes, sir. Our good brother, Clark, in the studio. That's right. And uh, Roland Bubba Grimes. Roland Bubba Grimes. Right here on the Peace in the Morning right. Show. Thank you so much, Shed. Crank us on out Push here, it, man. crank Peace. it, move it. Time to get that move and do it. Mm. What's up, Heartbeat? Oh, yeah. Come on. Peace, everybody.
Super Shine, you had me rolling in this jump. <laughs> Got me all pumped up. Whoo! <laughs> you guys are funny. Oh, man. We had a good show yesterday. And another good one today. Mm -hmm. Have another good one tomorrow. Man. Let me see where that is. My good brother, thank you, partner. Always a pleasure. Sir. Appreciate you, man. I thank you so much. No doubt. I appreciate you. And, and, and all this, all this wisdom that you're sharing. Oh, I'm man. just absorbing. Oh, brother, I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for your energy. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 Y'all didn't say anything that you didn't want the public to hear, did you? No, I just turned it off. Oh, you did turn it off?